So this is what the Rivian looks like at night with the new update. See, I can scroll through and see you got that nice tailgate view right there. And if I would like to, I can turn my tail bed lights on. Let's go look at that view now. This is again, the, the lights are on in the bed. Pretty cool. You can see right in there. And check this new mode out at in, in night. And right now I'm in all purpose. And ride high to set the standard. Regen high, stability on, and ride feel soft. Okay, you see the automatic high beams just kicked on. And if you notice the tires here, the more I accelerate, uh, the more blue show up. And when I take my foot off the accelerator and it regens, you see that the tires fill up in green and it's showing the regen. It would be nice if they added on here later the amount of kilowatts they're put back into the into the uh, into the battery. Just another additional data point. Yeah, right now it says my battery temperature is at 76. And my motor temperatures are huh. One motor is like 73 and the rest are, oh, the rear motors are a lot cooler, I notice. Probably because they're doing a lot less work. Interesting to see that. And I wonder if they change this with drive modes. Okay, I'm going to slow down and... That's my foot fully off the uh, accelerator and it came to a full stop. Whoa, yeah, baby. Woo. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put it in sport mode uh, now when I go off the exit on this ramp. So I'm going to hit, hit sport mode. And you see that all lit up right there. And right now the vehicle is lowering it down to uh, the lowest ride height. And you see right now it sells the ride feel is soft, which is still stability on, brake regen is still on high. And you see I heated those motors up quite a bit. Now they're 107, all four of them, nice and toasty. Battery still sitting at a nice uh, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, it's showing my elevation and my uh, compass right there. So I'm ready to accelerate here. Okay, I'm going to come down to a stop in this exit ramp. And I'm going to punch it. Whoa! Woo! <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's like riding on a roller coaster. You see the battery temperature is still constant. You see I got my rear motors heated up this time. So maybe uh in sport mode, perhaps the rear motors are doing a lot more work. God, that was that was that was exhilarating. That's one of the best things about this Rivian, the acceleration, baby. Man. <laughs> nice. And as I'm cruising, you know, it's just very little blue um, showing up in the tires. I'm only going around 61 miles an hour. The uh, speed up a bit. Not too fast. I'm gonna try to get a ticket today. Trying to stay within the speed limit. Let's 
and the temperature outside is 55 degrees and it's about 4 11 a.m. Just turn my defrost on to get some of this You can definitely tell a ride difference in sport mode. It's a lot more stiff. The bump, and I have sport tires on here also, so you're gonna get a, a rougher ride in uh, sport mode, even though it's set to soft. Uh, this does, I believe, stiffens the suspension up. So there's less rolls around curves. Yeah, you got some walking, what the heck is that? Is that guy on the bike? Oh, that guy, that is dangerous. No reflections at all. Very dangerous. Did not see that guy. I thought it was an animal in the street. You need some reflective gear on riding on a highway like this. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. And yeah, I can't show off-road mode in this because I'm going too fast, but the only thing that really changes is uh, the pitch and the yaw. But this is some awesome information to have right here to be able to see what your vehicle is doing. And you know, maybe they to calibrate this a bit more because I find it hard to believe that you know I don't even see any blue or either any green right here and obviously, obviously I'm still moving uh, I don't think it's momentum pulling me uh, yeah so I'm not sure why the tires are there's only a slight sliver line of blue and you probably can't even see it Yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback in my comment section regarding a lot of myths that are surrounding electric vehicles. And I, I plan on doing a video probably on each subject. There's so many different myths that I just, it kind of blows my mind that people believe these things. But um, in this age of social media, a lot of propaganda can be pumped out pretty easily and and those things can be difficult to refute uh, once it gets out there you know once it gets entrenched in people's minds it's hard to sometimes come back and you know and tell them the, the actual truth <laughs> uh, you know because a, a lot of people don't want to purchase EVs and they're looking for any excuse truth or not to uh, avoid them and I'm sure there are a lot of agendas at play there are a, a lot of people that stands to lose uh, if the market transition over to electric vehicles uh, but new jobs were created new opportunities will be created you know so but I can understand the people working in current positions uh, like the part suppliers and some auto manufacturing positions how they can feel uh, that their positions may be somewhat in jeopardy. Uh, when I don't necessarily believe that's true. It's gonna, you're going to have gas cars around for a while. Um, and a lot of that, that parts supplier may switch over to supplying people parts for, for gas vehicles. Because at some point, the market is going to switch over to electric and a lot of these auto manufacturers probably won't be selling any more internal combustion engine vehicles. Especially as the uh, technology improves more and more uh, and once the charging infrastructure is a lot more solid and I'm, I believe that's probably going to take place over the next uh, three to five years where the, the charging infrastructure is going to be one less excuse a person will have to not uh, switch over to electric. And the cars are awesome, you know, so that is, I think, the biggest selling point to me is that 
electric cars are better than get they they've gotten to the point and this wasn't true in the past but for right now they gotten to the point where I would say that they are better than gas cars for most people in most situations. Now, of course, you do have those fringe cases where that may not necessarily be the case where the, the technology hasn't caught up, like with uh, in extreme cold weather or towing situations. Uh, the only solution that has been created really is just to add more batteries. but. But we know how, at one point, how uh, big cell phones were. At one point, and if you're if you're probably younger than me, you probably don't remember. But prior to cell phones, uh, we had these things called called bag phones, and they were mobile phones, and they came in a big bag with a gigantic battery that you carried around like a purse, and the phone had a cord on it connected to a box with an antenna on it and you know, i'll see people walking around in the mall with them and he's like man they look like the coolest people on the planet you know walking around with their phone cords uh in this bag you know because back then most homes still had uh corded phones or you may have had a uh, a cordless by the end but uh but yeah those back phones are really cool but the batteries were gigantic and then you just go over the the improvements, the incremental improvements that happen with cell phone batteries. You have the, the, the big flip phones with the gigantic antennas on it. Uh, and then over time, small phones got thinner and thinner and thinner because that, that battery technology improved. The, the overall technology improved. Now you're basically carrying a computer in your pocket. So not just a computer, a computer that's also a, a camera, one of the top cameras you can get. And that's one of the kind of what I say about the Rivian. It's like in the Teslas and the Lucids, these are cars built by tech companies, and these are basically like your smartphone for the for this era versus a, a regular car. It'd be more like a, may, maybe like a flip phone or a pager. Uh, so that's kind of the comparison I make that that these vehicles can be, especially this Rivian R1T, is like an all-in-one vehicle. You, you, have, you it's a truck, uh, it's a computer on wheels that can be updated over the air, it's a supercar, and it's a, a premium cruiser, daily driver, and it does it efficiently at a low cost compared to the gas counterpart. So uh, just, just a lot of improvements here. But people still have to get past a lot of the the myths that are out there, like EVs are more prone to fires, that's completely false. I've been going back and forth with people for about two weeks over this. You cannot find any information online that not credible anyway, where it says that EVs are more, more prone to fires than, than gas cars, because it's, it's simply untrue. They're a lot less prone to fires. Uh, EVs are more difficult to steal and there are a lot of reasons around that. Um, they're safer. You have bigger crumple zones. They're heavier. Uh, they're better in the snow. I've been going back and forth with people about that. You know, trying to tell me that electric cars are worse in the snow. And it's the exact opposite. EVs are heavier. And they're more balanced. Uh, because of the batteries are low. They have a low center of gravity. Less likely to tip over. So there's a lot of things working in it in an electric vehicle's favor uh, that you just don't, you can't have with the internal combustion engine vehicle. And I plan on making video, like I said, I'm gonna make a video discussing each one of these subjects. But that's for another day. But now we're just checking out, you see I'm getting a lot more regen here. And I'm ready to get on the highway now. And we're gonna see how this, uh, you see now that I'm pressing, you see a lot more blue here. Motors are a lot hotter on the front. You see my front motors are at 141 and 143. Rear motors at 116 and, and 118. I'm gonna put this thing in conserve mode just to see what that does with the battery temperatures. And you can see it's starting to come down a bit, but I'm gonna put this thing in conserve mode just as a test. 
to see what it does with the battery temps. I suspect the rear motors are going to go down. This is my suspicion, but we'll see. And as you can see, when I accelerate, you only see the blue in the uh, front tires. And it looks like my rear motors are starting to cool down. But even the front motors are starting to cool down. So perhaps in sport mode, it, it creates a lot more heat for the motors. And of course, I was doing stop and go in the stop time. So that, you know, uh, acceleration and deceleration probably causes a lot more, a lot more heat. And as you can see, uh, if you cannot see here, my, my rear motors are cooling down even more. They're down to 107. And the front motors are at 134 and 138. This is always interesting in the morning. Trying to merge over. All righty. And again, uh, as I accelerate, you can see that the rear motors are not engaged at all and the temperatures are continuing to drop. Uh, my front motor temperatures are raising. Uh, they're in the 140s. And the rear motor uh, heat te temperatures continue to drop them down to 102. That's almost a 40 degree uh, temperature uh, delta right there. Again, they're still dropping. One, it's dropped down to 98 degrees. And both the rear motors are at 98 degrees now. Well, all right, well, uh, that is going to conclude this video. I'd like to thank you for joining me again. And I will see you on the next video.